Thank you, Micaiah. If you have your Bible this morning, please go to Luke chapter 23. Our focus this month has been on Thanksgiving, and we started the month off with, uh, we'll give thanks unto the Lord for His mercy endureth forever. Thanking God for His wonderful mercy, and we define uh, that uh, word mercy several different ways. Primarily, it means God's kind treatment of us when we do not deserve it. And what a merciful God that we have. Uh, we talk about being grateful for the church, I think our second Sunday of the month, and boy, I'm sure grateful for the institution of the local New Testament church. Last Sunday morning, I'm grateful for the Bible, a major part of our theme in the year of 2014, as the Lord tarries, will be the Word of God. Uh, we will give you on uh, that Christmas Sunday, that Sunday before Christmas, a, a nice uh, card that you, I think about five by seven, and you'll be able to keep that in your Bible this year. You know, have a nice Bible reading schedule for you. Uh, uh, one I know that you'll like. You know, it'll be very easy for you to follow that and get through the Bible. Uh, I, I've started already. My wife said, you're cheating. You're not supposed to read ahead like that. Uh, I, I've, I've read two weeks th th uh, this week. Uh, and... Uh, I, I just enjoy how that schedule's set up. I didn't think I'd like it. I usually more systematic. I start in one book and I read the whole book through, go to the next book. And this schedule has you jumping around a little bit. I didn't think I'd like it, but I like it. And I think you're going to like it. It'll help you read the Bible. And we want to get the Word of God in our hearts. So last Sunday, I'm thankful for the Bible. Today, I'm thankful for my salvation. Aren't you glad you're saved? I'm glad I'm saved. You say, what are you talking about? I'll tell you in a minute if you don't know, but I'm glad I'm saved. And uh, uh, let's look at Luke 23. One of the great stories in the Bible about the simplicity of salvation. And I will give you a simple message today, uh, but uh, I want you to listen carefully and rejoice with me in your salvation. I believe that if as God's children, we are not grateful as we should for our salvation we will always struggle in the Christian life. I have never met a Christian that reached their potential for Jesus Christ when they doubted their salvation or they, they were not appreciative of it. I think one of the great things, Pastor, I'm struggling with sin. What's, the, what's one, of the, one piece of advice to help me? Thank God that you're saved. And that gratitude ought to trans, will, will translate into love and love translates into obedience. And obedience is always blessed by God. Uh, but we need to be grateful. Uh, there's so much ingratitude today uh, in our society. And if we're not careful, it creeps into us. I, I deal with about 500 kids each time I'm on the campus of our school. And uh, I'm amazed how many children don't say please or thank you. It's been my, my goal this year to teach those kids manners. And it's working. Uh, in many areas, but it's a battle. It's a daily battle to teach gratitude. We ought to be grateful as Christians, and I hope that we will be certainly for our salvation. Look at Luke chapter 23, uh, verse 34. I'll let you remain seated today, but I want you to follow closely with me. Luke 23, verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And the superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. One of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. That story so beautifully pictures how simple salvation is. Some will say, well, you got to get baptized to go to heaven. This man didn't. The thief that looked to Jesus. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Many people say, well, you have to clean up your life. You have to 
fill your life with good deeds to go to heaven. We know that that man didn't, yet Jesus said today, Sir, you'll be with me in paradise. Some say, well, you have to belong to a church. You be a, you're a, if you're a church member, uh, and it's got to be the right church, uh, then you'll go to heaven. But we know that this man was not a church member. He was not uh, faithful to church. Uh, but Jesus said today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. What did he do? He did what everybody has to do to go to heaven, and that's to look to Jesus and Jesus alone and say, Lord, that, that, that name, Lord, implies I believe who you are, and I'm trusting you. Will you remember me? Uh, I'm glad there, there's, there's no prayer in the Bible that God says we've got to say these words exactly. Uh, I don't know what you said when you got saved, uh, I think I remember almost word for word what I told Jesus 21 years ago, almost 22 years ago. I remember getting on my knees and saying, first of all, I don't know how to pray, Jesus. I said, Jesus, I don't know how to pray. But I know I'm a sinner. And I know I deserve hell. If that's what you say, I deserve. And I ask that you take me tonight as I am and I receive you as my Savior. Oh, forgive me. And he forgave me. Uh, what did you do, Pastor? I just did what that thief did. I looked to Jesus and said, Lord, Lord, uh, salvation is so wonderful. I'm going to talk about my testimony briefly and then give you a very simple message today as we're grateful today, I hope, and maybe more so is my prayer for our salvation. Let's pray today. Father, thank you for this great story. Uh, all the people that, that I've met in my lifetime that, that said there's some other way to go to heaven. Uh, besides Jesus, or in addition to Jesus. They, they can never explain this story to back up their doctrine, their false doctrine. I'm sure glad this, is, this account is in the Bible. Because it shows us that there's one way to go to heaven, that's to look to Jesus. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus. Now and that is recorded in my word, hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. Lord, thank you today for our salvation. And if there... Uh, be anyone here today that is not 100% sure from the Bible that heaven is their future home. Lord, I sure hope and pray today that this would be the day of their salvation and that they would be able to rejoice with those of us who know that we're saved and on our way to heaven. Thank you today that it's not through a church because, Lord, if we have, have chosen the wrong one, then we have no hope or have no hope. I thank, well, thank you, Lord, that it's not through... Uh, baptistry waters that our sins are washed away because some folks can't get baptized because of health or other issues. Father, I'm glad today that you made it so easy for us. We simply look to Jesus. May we never get over the fact that we're saved. Help us today to rejoice in our salvation. Bless our message, please, for Jesus' sake. Amen. 22 years this February, I knelt. I, I believe it was right around the 15th of the month. I did not write the day down. No one told me. No one was there with me that night and said, you, you're going to want to remember this day. Uh, write it in your Bible. Uh, but I know the month. I certainly know the year. But I think it was right around the 15th or so of the month. I, of course, was living in the world. And uh, because of my mentality and uh, the world and the world's offerings, my my world began to crumble around me. Uh, I began to get a lot of the things that the world said I needed to have to make me happy. And they did not make me happy. And to be real honest, it scared me. There was nothing in my life that was more empty and, and frightening than getting what I was supposed to get and being empty. The world said, get this and you'll be full, and I got it, and I was empty. They said, well, if you have this, you have money, or you have a nice car, or a nice house, or this or that, you'll be happy. And I was getting those things, and I was miserable. And where do you go next? What do you do now? What do you do when you have what you're supposed to have to fulfill you, and it doesn't? And it scared me, and I did the only thing that I could know to do. I got on my knees, and I prayed God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. And that's what I, that's, I got up off my knees, went to bed. The next morning I got in my vehicle to go to work and turn on the radio station to listen to some music and 
I hit the scan button, it landed on a religious station, and a preacher was preaching. I instinctively want, wanted to get it off that station. I didn't want anybody preaching to me. And um, I remembered my prayer the night before, and I brought, brought, brought my hand back, and I said, in my mind, I said, Lord, if you're real, and if you heard my prayer last night, maybe this is the way that you're going to answer it. I'll listen to what this guy has to say. And you don't find this much on the radio anymore, but back yonder, this man was preaching the gospel, and he preached it right along uh, with the Bible. He said, I was a sinner, and I knew that. I had sinned the night before, and I had no problem. If God said that's what I was, I, I was realizing that he was convicting my heart about my sin. That preacher said I deserve hell, and I had enough respect for God, although I didn't live my life for him. I, I believe that if God uh, said it, then, then I, that's what I deserve. He has the right to call the shots, not me. And I believed in a little hell. That man preached hell and hell fire, and, uh, and I thank God that he did. That night I got, I got saved. I, I did not, my, my main motivation was not to go to heaven. I knew I'd go to heaven if I got saved. But my main motivation was I, don't, I didn't want to go to hell. God convicted me so strongly about my sin through the preaching of that man on the radio. I didn't want to go to hell. He told me the greatest news. And I heard this throughout my life, but I never knew how it applied to me. But he told how Jesus came and died on the cross for my salvation. And if I put my faith in him, he would save me. And I did not get saved that morning on the way to work, but I shut off that radio. And that night I went home as I did every uh, weeknight. And I pulled into the driveway of my house in East Sacramento, California. And I had a side door there that went into the kitchen. It was an older home, but in a very nice area of the town. And uh, I went into the kitchen, opened the refrigerator to pour out a, or to, to pull out a, a beverage and to begin drinking. And uh, I slid that beverage back in the fridge and closed the door and I went back into that little room where I prayed the night before God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. God showed me what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to trust his son as my savior. And I got in that very same spot where I knelt the night before and I'm not a crying man, but I was weeping that night and tears were dropping off my cheeks onto the carpet and I said those words to Jesus. I don't know how to pray, but Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I deserve hell and if you'll save me, uh, I trust you as my savior. And I tell people all the time, you don't have to experience an emotion or anything like that when you get saved. If you do, that's fine. But you're saved because you trust Jesus Christ. Sometimes people weep. Sometimes people laugh. Sometimes people uh, uh, show no emotion. I, I've led many people to Christ, and I, I've seen people weep. And boy, you think, boy, those people, boy, they really got saved, and they're going to go turn the world upside down. And a lot of times they don't make it. And then this other guy, uh, you know, he no emotion, no laughter, no tears. And, and you're, you walk away thinking, man, I don't know. He, he prayed and he said he did it. God, I don't think, I mean, yeah, I don't think he ever did it. And that guy goes on and builds the biggest church in the world. You just don't know. But if someone trusts Christ, they're saved. Uh, that night, God changed my life. I, I got up off my knees in prayer. And I felt, I can't explain it, but I, I felt like a, a weight, a huge weight, literally, lifted off my shoulders. And Christ was in that room that night, the Holy Spirit, there was nothing spooky, I did not see a vision of Him, but I very uh, clearly felt His presence. And He gave me, perhaps because there was nobody there to guide me through the Bible, God was there to give me complete assurance that night that I got saved. I took down that Bible that I shared with you last uh, Sunday morning and I began to read it for several hours and fell in love with God that night. And Although the next several months and about a year my Christianity was very rocky and it was a series of ups and downs and growth. Uh, through it all I saw God faithfully grow me and mature me as a Christian. Of course I'm still maturing uh, and growing every day. But I'm thankful for my salvation. Say, Pastor, I don't have a testimony really, uh, really like that. I'm kind of boring. Well, you, you ought to, your testimony ought to be the most precious thing in the world to you. Amen. Maybe you have a testimony like that. Say, Pastor, well, I, I was saved out of deep sin, and boy, God really woke me up. And maybe I, I know people that were in car accidents, and that woke them up, and they got saved, and all the wonderful stories I've heard over the years. But I think the most precious testimony is a young child that says, you know what, I was five years old, I got saved. I never drank or so I don't even know what that's like. Yeah, I don't want any part of that. But God kept me from all that. That's a great testimony. 
I'm glad my kids have that testimony. Don't, don't ever uh, covet my testimony. You, you'd be grateful for yours. Every testimony in this room of salvation is precious. Amen. And it ought to be the most precious thing in the world to you. Uh, I like mine the best, but you ought to like yours the best. Because it happened to you. I'm thankful for my salvation. Several things, real quickly. Stay with me, class. Uh, you're doing all right? Little, uh, it's comfortable up here. Are you warm out there? Are you okay? Are you all right? We're going to be okay. Wake yourselves up. If you, if you slouch over and you really lean back in your seat, you're just asking to go to sleep. So let's sit up straight, young people. Sit up. Don't be leaning on mama or on somebody else. Sit up and listen to me. Let's be grateful for our salvation today. Why am I thankful? Can I say number one? <coughs> I'm thankful. <coughs> Excuse me. Because God made it available for everybody. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember several years ago when we first came to Stockton, I was right up the road here where we go soul winning often and uh, I was uh, talking with a, a young Cambodian fellow and he, he's, I, I began to tell him about Jesus and he said, oh no, I can't trust Jesus. He said, Jesus is, is the God of the American people. And I said, let me tell you some good news, uh, sir. I, I, I took him to John 3.16 and I said, let me show you this verse here. And, he, and it says, for God so loved the world. And I, I, said, I said, where are you from? He said, Cambodia. I said, the world, is Cambodia part of the world? He said, oh yeah, it is. I said, that you got the same God as I, the, the, the God of America is the God of Cambodia. And boy, he's excited. Jesus is, is, is our God too. He loves us. Yeah. God made it salvation available for everyone. Uh, that's why salvation is so wonderful. Because God didn't say you got to be a member of this church or you're out. God said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, bless God, is in. Revelation 22, 17, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. Let him that is thirst come. And whosoever will... Let him take the water of life freely. 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some men count slackness, but is long suffering, bless God, to us. We're not willing, what, class, that any should perish, but that what? All should come to repentance. I love salvation because it's made available to everyone red or yellow, black or white, American or whatever country uh, uh, someone's from. It's available. Christ uh, is available. And salvation is made possible for everyone. I'm thankful for my salvation secondly today because God made it so easy to be saved. It's easy to be saved. I've led thousands of Christ. Sometimes I've had people say, that's it. It says simple, huh? Yeah, that was easy. I said it was very hard for Jesus. He made it very easy for us. By the way, don't, don't ever look at on your end that it was so easy. Uh, if you look at it that way, I think sometimes we become ungrateful because, oh, that's so simple. Well, you got to look at why it was so simple. Because somebody really endured a lot of pain and suffering to make it that easy for you. And that'll give you the gratitude part back. He says, well, I, you know, I did that. I, I don't like when people say, All right, uh, we, we give them the plan of salvation. Oh, I did that. I don't like, I did that. You did what? Oh, that, that, that thing. Yeah, I did that thing. What, what's that mean? I, I got saved. I didn't do that. I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I didn't do that thing, thing, thing over there, you know. Oh, I, I'm not doubting anybody's salvation, but, but I, I think we make it too simple because it's so easy on our part. We've got to remember it's very hard on his part. Very hard. But thank God that it is easy. We see that here in the example of the thief on the cross in Luke 23. Uh, I don't think it's that easy, Pastor. Okay, read your Bible then and just look at this man that said, Lord, will you remember me today? Lord, remember me. See, we now, some of us, we wouldn't think that guy got saved. But Jesus said, okay, you're in, buddy. Oh, we'd say that guy didn't get saved. That old guy. All this religious crowd that says you got to clean up your life, you got to get baptized, you got to join the church. They would have wrote that guy off. That guy's going to be in heaven someday because he simply looked to Jesus and said, Lord, remember me. Well, he didn't pray exactly how he should have prayed, Pastor. Jesus took him. Jesus said, That's pretty good. If we, if we heard somebody just said, Lord, remember me, we all oh, that guy didn't get saved. Jesus said he got saved. It's a matter of the heart. He said, Lord, I'm believing who you are, Lord. He told the other thief, he said, hey, you, you don't accuse him. Don't, don't, 
Don't you respect God? He's saying, He's God. He doesn't deserve to be here. We do, Lord, remember me. Jesus said, you're in, buddy. I'll remember you. will be with me in paradise. Don't worry about it. Amen. Pretty simple. I didn't have to get baptized. I'm glad I did get baptized, but I didn't have to get baptized. I got baptized in, in a river outside of Oakdale. Fish, trout swimming around my feet. Uh, I had to walk down the bank from the church through all the brush and the, the stickers and get in that cold water and have the pastor dump me in the water. But I didn't have to do any of that to get saved. I just had to trust Jesus that night in that room. He made it simple. Uh, the Bible likens salvation to so many simple things. Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Say, Pastor, how, how easy is it to get saved? Can you open a door? I guess nobody can. Can you open a door? Okay, some of you can. Uh, God said you get saved. Amen. We make it so difficult. Oh, you got to join. I, I was in the hospital, community hospital, uh, several years ago. I was in the waiting room. And I looked over, and there was a, a, a track there. It said, God's simple plan of salvation. I knew the man that originally wrote that track, Fred Porter, uh, back in Indiana many, many years ago. I picked up that track. It wasn't the same track. It was a church here in our town. And it said, God's simple plan of salvation. I opened that thing up. There's about 13 points in there. I said, God, something's wrong here. I began to read those points, how to get saved. Started off pretty good. Re realize you're a sinner. Okay, good. Realize that Jesus died for you. You deserve hell. Okay, that's pretty good. Then it started getting difficult. Then it said you got to repent of all your sins, clean up your life, join the church, get baptized in the name of Jesus, by the way, and then speak in tongues. And then, I mean, all these things listed there. And if you do all that, you, you still won't know. And you can still lose it even if you got it. But it's God's simple plan of salvation. I ripped that thing up, threw it in the trash, and I put our track there and said, there's a simple plan of salvation. Bless God, I'm a sinner. I deserve hell. Jesus died for me. Receive him as your Savior and you're saved. I don't believe that. You don't read Luke 23 then. You don't believe in for whosoever shall call the name of the Lord shall be saved. God made it so simple. He said if you can open the door, he said if you could, it, it, it's likened to drinking water. Jesus is the water of life. Can you drink a, a glass of water? He said you can get saved. Romans 6, 23, but God commended his love toward us and why we get sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, it, it's a gift. The wages of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God, rather, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, Romans 6, 23, it's like receiving a gift at Christmas. Can you, if somebody gave you a gift, can you take that gift? Jesus so said you can get saved. It's receiving a gift. It's like walking through a door. John 10, 9, Jesus said, I am the door. And you walk through a door, you can get saved. I like Luke chapter 15, it's like going home. The prodigal son said, oh, I sinned against thee, my father. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. I'm going home to daddy. Uh, son, daddy's been out there every day waiting for you to get home. Well, I, I can go... Can, at the end of the day, young people, can you leave school and go home? Can you, older adults, at the end of the day, can you leave work and go home? You can go home, you can get saved. You can walk through a door, you can get saved. Can you drink a glass of water? You can get saved. God said that's how simple it is. Uh, the Old Testament shows how simple salvation is. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, what did they try to do? They tried to make covering with fig leaves. That was man's attempt to cover their sin. God said, you're not fooling anybody. That ain't going to work. What God did? God slayed a, a, an animal, and he made skins for them. It was a blood atonement, a blood sacrifice. Man's still trying to cover his sins through the church, through the baptistry waters. God said, it's only through the blood. I've got to cover you. Simple. Simple. The people, the Israelites, murmured against God, and uh, God sent fiery serpents among them to bite the people, and uh, people started dying Mass numbers. God said, Moses, fashion a, a, a brazen serpent on a, on a pole and hold that up. And if the people look to that, they, they'll live. Uh, and the, 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 the poison of the serpents will not affect them. And in the New Testament, we learn that, that, again, that was a symbol of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those people, all they had to do was look to that, 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 that serpent on that pole and they'd be saved. It was simple as that. And God said, that's how we get saved. He said, look to Jesus. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. For whosoever, bless God, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you look at something? You can get saved. 
I just don't know if I have enough faith to get saved. Uh, can you drink water? Oh yeah, I drink water. You can get saved. I just don't know if I have that faith to believe that, Pastor. Can you look at? Can you look at that mirror right there? Oh, I can see that. Yeah, you can get saved. Then. Is that simple? Isn't it wonderful that God made it so easy? Amen. I'm grateful for being saved today. Uh, thirdly, real quickly, I'm thankful for salvation because God made it forever. Don't smile or anything, people, but you're only going to live forever. Yeah. Maybe some of you don't want to. Uh, but I do. I'm glad I, I could never die. Oh, this whole shell of a body might die if Jesus tarries, but bless God, I'll live forever. What, you know, I, I just don't believe that. What part of I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, don't you understand? All these churches, oh, you can lose it, you can lose it, you can lose it. Well, you ain't never got it, bless God, because my Bible says if you got it, you can't lose it. Well, I, I just don't believe that. Well, you don't believe the Bible then because Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life, they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He said, my father is greater than me. He said, no man is able to, it gave them to me, no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. You are secure, bless God, in the, the, the hand of Jesus Christ and the hand of the Father. And, and again, uh, don't be happy, but you're only going to live forever and nobody or nothing can take that away from you. Even if you chose to be unsaved, you can't. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. The word call means that you call one time and it, it, it's a definite uh, time of, uh, of occurrence. Uh, and, and it says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that word saved is in the linear tense. It means you're saved and 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 saved. It starts at a point, but it never ends. And God said, when you called one time on Jesus, you got saved at that moment, and it goes forever. Big deal. When's church get out? Salvation, gratitude for it would change your life. Uh, I'm glad that God made it forever. I'm almost done. Stay with me. Only 13 more points and we'll be done. Uh, I'm, I'm thankful for salvation. Why? It not only gives me an eternal home in heaven, but the opportunity to have a better life on earth. We get the best of both worlds. We get the world to come and we can have a better life here. I was thinking last night, you know, you hear the noises around the neighborhood and the music playing and so on and so forth. I'm just laying in bed thinking, God... First of all, I'd like to kill my neighbors. Secondly, uh, I pray for their salvation before I do that. Uh, thirdly, God, I'm glad I'm not in the world anymore. God, I'm glad I'm not in that thing anymore. I'm partying it Friday night. I'm, God, I'm so glad I'm out of that stuff. I'm glad I'm a child of God. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. We're going to go to heaven and have the, the perfect eternal life, but we can have a better life on this earth too because of our salvation. Jesus said, I give you both. Only salvation can do that. Last thing, I'll give you three things to hopefully do here, and we'll, we'll pray and have our invitation. I'm grateful for salvation because, listen, no matter what happens here on earth, listen, we know that our future is secure and wonderful in Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad that this isn't it? I'll tell you what, if it was, I would have been at my neighbor's party with them last night. But it ain't it. And this whole world is empty and vain. And oh, well, there's some good things in it. Don't get me wrong. And God's given us many wonderful things to enjoy while we're here. We've messed up a lot of it, but he gave it to us. And, and we can have some good lives down here. But I'm glad this is, isn't it. You look around our world. And you ever look at good night all around the world? Look at most of these men and sometimes women that are in charge of some of these countries. And you think, dear God, I mean, they're all, almost all of them evil. Good night. This world, oh, we're so vulnerable. Some of these leaders are so unstable. And good night, you wonder, oh, God, I mean, how, all they got to do is push a button and, and I mean, we're dead or we're, we're in a big world war and it doesn't happen. That's the mercy of God and the fact that God still, God's got his hand on this thing. Nothing can happen unless he gives a go ahead. But bless God, I mean, if I wasn't saved today and I'm looking around at what's going on in this world, man, I'd be out getting drunk too to try to shut out all the pain and the hopelessness. But this isn't all that's it. 
This is as bad as it gets for us. This is our, I, I hear people say, uh, this, this is hell, I'm going through hell. Oh, no, if, if you're not saved, this is your heaven. This is as good as it gets for you. But listen, for us who are saved, this is our hell. Because so this is as bad as it's ever going to get for us. It ain't all bad down here. Uh, but this isn't it. And I thank God, and I'm thankful for salvation because no matter what happens here, we have a, a, a future that is secure. Jesus said, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, three things, and I'll pray. We'll have an invitation. Why don't you just come in just a moment and just thank God if you're saved. Just thank Him for it. Never get over it. Relive in your mind the day or night of your salvation and do that every day, if not many times a day. I'll mention that. Let, let, number next, letter A on my outline. Regarding salvation, continually meditate upon it and thank God for it every day. If you didn't do it that this week, you missed out, but you ought to do it every day. I'll tell you why we struggle. I'll tell you why we're, we're not faithful, why we struggle with sin. We're not grateful for our salvation, folks. If you're grateful, you'll love God. If you love God, you'll obey God. All these things we listed today, you can add to that list. There's so many others that we can be thankful for regarding our salvation, but, but meditate upon that day that you got saved that night. Where was it? Thank God for it. Don't ever get over it. There is nothing, I believe, more this year that will motivate you to be the type of Christian you are uh, uh, the, other than you getting a hold of the fact that you're a child of God on your way to heaven, you're never going to go to hell, God saved you, and you just are, are swelled up with pride and gratitude for that fact. It will change your life. Why do you do what you do, Pastor? Because you're the pastor? No, I'm a Christian that 22 years ago almost got saved. I realized that night how wicked I was. I realize it still today. And God loved me then. He still loves me now. I'm never going to hell. I'm going to heaven. You can't keep me from church. You can't keep me from doing what God wants me to do. Bless God. I love Him too much. I'm too great. I'm not perfect. You ask my wife and my kids. The man with the microphone will always win, so be careful. <laughs> I take back all the, the, that one nice thing I said about you then. You get a hold of the fact that you're saved, it'll change your life. You say, I liked it, that, I did that. That doesn't produce good Christianity. I did that. Jesus isn't a that. Next, be a good testimony for Christ because you're saved. Be a good testimony. Maybe you're going to be around some loved ones this holiday week. Maybe you won't be able to share the gospel with them, but they ought to look at your life and say, you know, someone's different about them. Oh, they yeah, go to church. Be a good testimony. Can I say, lastly, spend your life sharing the gospel with others. I just don't, I don't know how to do that. You know how you got saved? Share it. Give your testimony. The number one tool that you have at your disposal to help win another person to Christ is your own testimony. God will put, by the way, people in your life that will, will have similar experiences to you that you'll be able to say, you know what? I was just like you. And this is what happened to me. I said, wow. Wow. I told our Sunday school class a little bit this morning. I, uh, there uh, if you're newer to our church, but I, I, I'm a chaplain, a volunteer chaplain for the police department, and uh, there's a retired officer. He's a young man. He's just in his mid-50s. But he's struggling with an illness that is affecting his memory, and he's very good at, he can hear anything that you tell him. He's very sharp, but he cannot, he cannot communicate back to you. Just He can't form the words. He can't write the words, and it just, it frustrates him. And the first time I sat with him for a few hours just to help his wife and his family, uh, uh, he basically slept the whole time. I didn't really think I'd ever get to see him again after that. He just did not look good to me. And he was very discouraging as far as his health. I prayed for him and he were praying for him and his salvation. I got to sit with that dear man uh, this past week and he woke up and I 
cared for him a little bit, and I, I, I said, can I pray with you? And uh, he said, yeah. He didn't speak the word, but he nodded his head. I began to pray, and I opened my eyes, and big tears coming in, welling up, big, tough police officer. And I said, uh, has anybody ever shared with you from the Bible how you go to heaven? No. I said, magic question to know God, help me. I said, would you let me do that? Took my Bible down. Took him through the gospel. Yeah. So would you like to trust Christ? I said, I'm going to pray. I said, I, I know you can't get the words out, but just do it in your heart. You know, he's trying to say it. He couldn't say it. He just kept frustrated. I said, don't, don't worry about saying it. Just make sure you're trusting. Mm -hmm. We went through it all. I gave him assurance. I said, now, did, did you understand? Yeah. Did you understand? Yeah. Did you make that decision in your heart? Yeah. Okay. I left the room and I said, God, I feel that he did, but I just don't know. I don't want to sign, but he can't talk to me. And I just want to know, God, just could you give me some assurance? I went back in the room after about 10 minutes, and he's still awake, and he's just crying. And he's pointing to something in the corner of the room, and I, again, he can't communicate to me verbally, so I'm like, hey, what do you need? What do you want? Uh, 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 you know? What, what? He's pointing to me at this little shelf there in the room, and, and the only thing on that shelf, I, I, I brought a book to read in my Bible. I'm thinking, I know he's not, not, he doesn't want the Bible. What's he pointing at? And he's getting frustrated at me. <laughs> and and I, I said, the Bible? Yeah, the Bible, you, I mean, you want to say you big idiot? The Bible, stupid. I said, you want the Bible? Yeah. He gave him the Bible, and he's holding it in his hand, his tears in his eyes, and he's like, pointing at it. I said, you want me to read it to you? Yeah. It's a miracle. <coughs> I read the Bible for about a half hour, just read it to him. He's crying. His caregiver comes, young man. And uh, I introduce myself to him and tell him what happened with him. And I'm getting ready to leave, and the caregiver's in the kitchen. He's just about 19, 20 year old young man. And he says, hey, I, he says, Look, can I ask you a question before you leave? I'm like, yeah, I think, you, you know, I, what's he going to ask me? He comes up to me. He says, he mentions the man's name, the officer's name. He says, do you know if he's even saved? I said, what? He said, I didn't even know you were saved. I said, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. He said, I've only, this is my second day here. He said, the first time I seen him, he said, immediately my heart just burned. I said, this, I wonder if this guy's even saved, but I, he can't communicate. And I said, let me tell you what just happened. Oh, he got so excited. Oh, you made my day. Oh, he said, I've been praying for him. I said, there's a lot of people been praying for him. Uh, I'll get to see him this week, that officer. And I hope we have a great time of rejoicing together. I thank God that he didn't need to come to the church to get saved. Because he wouldn't be saved. I thank God that he didn't get, need to get baptized or clean up his life. Because he wouldn't be saved today. All he had to do was look to Jesus. And that's all anybody has to do. If you've never looked to Jesus and trusted Him as your Savior, you can do that today. You can be saved. Uh, if you are saved, be grateful. Never get over it. Never get over it. Let's pray today. Father, we love You. You're an amazing, wonderful God. Thank You for salvation. It is a gift. It is free. It's been purchased through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's ours for the taking. I thank You, Lord, that we can look back, so many of us in this room, to that day or that night, that time in our lives where, where we remember the fact that, that we, we realized for the first time, perhaps, or maybe we struggled with it. We just never came to the point where we did it. But we were ready to deal with our sinful condition. The fact that we deserve hell. The fact that Jesus died in our place and that He was the only way to heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, said Jesus. And we trusted Him as our Savior. What a glorious day. We might have laughed. We might have cried. We might have just not showed much emotion at all. But we know in our heart we trusted Him. And that's all that matters. And that's all that matters today. If you've never trusted Jesus. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. Let me ask you today. No one's looking around. No one's talking. If you're here today and you're not 100% sure that heaven's your home. Uh, don't leave here without trusting Christ. Now it's your decision. We're not going to make you do anything. But I present to you a God that loves you. I present you to, to today a, a God that over 2,000 years ago left heaven and came to earth as a man. And just a, a few more weeks, we'll celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But that wasn't the beginning of Jesus, that day when he was born on this earth. That was just him coming to earth as a human being. He had been in a, 
heaven for all eternity. He's always been. He is God. But he loved you so much. He left his home, his wealth, his riches, his glory, his throne to humble himself as a man and come to this earth and be tempted like we are yet without sin. He lived a perfect life. And he was willing to suffer and die and shed his blood on a cross so that your sins could be paid for because God said that because of all of our sins, we deserve to die. The wages of sin is death. And that is not just dying on this earth, but going to hell forever and ever and ever. The Bible calls it a lake of fire. But yet God loved us so much, He wanted to make a way that we could escape hell. So He allowed His Son to come and die in our place. And Jesus was willing to go. And He died on the cross and shed His blood to pay for every sin that you've ever committed or will ever commit. And all you have to do is believe that He did that for you. And receive Him as your Savior. And trust Him with the faith that He's given you, and you can be saved. And I'm not going to ever force anybody to do to trust Christ, because you can't force somebody to be saved. But I present to you today that Savior who loved you so much to die for you. And you never have to pay for a, a single sin uh, that you've committed by dying and going to hell. And all you have to do is receive Him today. And I don't know why anybody would want to turn down a God like that. If you're here and you've never settled the fact that heaven's your home by faith in Jesus Christ, I'd like to pray for you. I need to know that you're here. No one's looking around. But if you are willing to say, Pastor, I might not understand everything about it, but I know today I'm a sinner. I know I've done wrong. God said we've all sinned. Don't be embarrassed about raising your hand just a moment. Everybody in this room is a sinner. Some are forgiven, some aren't. Just join the crowd. Be honest. All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We deserve hell, so I believe that. God calls the shots. If that's what I deserve, that, that's what I deserve. I believe Jesus died for you. He not only died, but he rose from the dead three days later. He's in heaven. He's alive and well. He proved he wasn't just a man. He proved he was the Savior, the Son of God. And he loves you, and he is looking forward to you calling upon his name today and trusting him and what he already did for you. And God said it's a gift. It's just like a Christmas present. Somebody went out and bought it for you, and all you have to do is receive it. But if you leave it unopened, it does you no good. And many have heard what I just said uh, throughout the ages, but they never opened the gift, and they died and went to hell and forgiven by God. You have to not just believe it in your head, but you have to transfer that belief to your heart and receive the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And you do that by calling upon the name of the Lord for whosoever shall call. Can you walk through a door? You can be saved today. Can you open a door? Can you drink a glass of water? Can you look to something? God said, it's that easy. Would you look to Jesus like the thief on the cross looked to him and say, Lord, remember me when thou enterest thy kingdom. Lord, save me. I'll help you with a prayer in just a moment, but I want to know that you're here first of all. If that's you, it may be several. I don't know. But settle today that heaven's your home. Would you say, Pastor, that's me today. I want to trust Jesus. Would you please pray for me? No one's looking. But if you let me know you're here today, would you slip up your hand and let me know you're here and you want to real quickly. I want to settle the fact that you're saved. Father, thank you today. And I pray today, Father, every person in this room would be full of gratitude, not just now, but every day, that we would relive our salvation and meditate upon the fact of our salvation. That it would be that primary thing in our lives that motivates us to love you, which will help us to obey you, which will help us to be blessed by you and be a blessing to you. Help us to be thankful today for our salvation. Bless our invitation. Would you stand with me today? Makai is going to play. Can you come just a moment or two and thank God today that you're saved?